of people can go away from your country. And I understand some Bulgarians have decided to go away. Some Chileans also decided. So if the, if the politician tax you too much or treat you not well, you say goodbye in a free society at least. In a free society, you have the right to go. So politicians don't know whether they will be able to tax the future workers. If a French president tomorrow decides that he will tax the, the young Frenchmen at 70% of their wages, a lot of young Frenchmen will say, adieu, <laughs> goodbye. Well, a lot of them are, are going to London. You see, in London there is a huge French community of people who simply do not want to be taxed at, at French taxation levels. There was recently a famous actor, actress, uh, Letitia Casta, that was the face of, of France, and, and the face of France decided to live in London because her, her, her income was taxed at 70 or 60 percent. So this lady, Letitia Casta, decided, lives in London, you see. Well, Ingmar Bergman, the great uh, Swedish filmmaker, also decided to leave Sweden because of taxes. So people have mobility, you see, especially the highest educated people. So politicians should be careful, you see, they will not be able to tax the professionals and the more educated people, because if they tax them too much, that people leave. So they will end up taxing the common worker. So they cannot tax whatever they want. Second, they cannot increase the debt, because some, some other governments say, well, but I, I can always have debt. Well, we see what is happening in the world now, when banks or uh, tomorrow government, to, what is happening today in Wall Street will happen tomorrow to governments, exactly the same. Because those banks increase and increase until a day comes when nobody lends you money, and then the fuel crisis. This time it happened to some arrogant people in Wall Street, someday it will happen to some arrogant politicians in Europe, you see. You cannot go into debt. So I insist that the, the, the solution for the future is a, a system of defined contribution, fully funded, and I call it a system of personal retirement accounts. I believe that is the way the common people can understand the system. I, I, I know some economists call it a second pillar. I, I don't like this talk of pillars. I talk of, about pillars in, when I go to Greece and I look at the Greek temple and I discuss the pillars of a Greek temple. But, but if you talk to a taxi driver and begin talking about the second pillar, the taxi driver will believe you are crazy, you see, or you are going to Greece, you see, but, but you cannot explain a second pillar to a taxi driver. No, you should talk to him whether he has an account, a saving account for old age, and the guy will understand, not a second pillar. So economy generally at, talk a language so complicated that people don't understand them. I am an economist, incidentally, but I try to speak when I promote public policy in the language of the people. Otherwise, you simply cannot get the support of the people and then you cannot change the world. So, this is a system of personal retirement accounts. And in Chile, it has been enormously successful. It's 28 years the system is there. Nobody has ever stolen one piece of the system because even though the system is managed by private companies competing among themselves to give the better service, of course we created a very important regulatory agency, a completely from, from nothing, that is in order for that agency to be not corrupted, to be honest, a lot of young people are in the agency, new people came to the agency, it's called the Superintendency of Pension Funds, and I created that. So I am in favor of the free market, but I am not a fool, you see, I know that the free market you have to look a little. Otherwise, things happen. Except, so we created a free market, but we have a, a, a regulatory agency that under the law, of course, a, a, a supervise the system. So in 28 years, we have never had any case of problem. Otherwise, I would not have been invited by the Institute for Market Economics. You see. So I, I can travel the world precisely because the system in Chile is very successful and very safe. It is well design, and the system has been working very well. It has had a very high rate of return. 95% of Chilean workers have chosen the, the system of personal accounts. I explained the system in television for a long period before the law was enacted. I went myself on television, explaining and explaining in simple language to the workers whether they wanted to have the old system or whether they prefer to have a, an account and save for retirement and have all these options and all this freedom and all this dignity of financing your own life or your own 
effort. And, and I am very glad of the fact that 95% of the workers, therefore, socialist workers, rightist workers, conservative, communists, whatever, see, they left their ideologies in the house and they decided to have a personal account. Because they know that with a personal account, nobody can steal, nobody can touch, nobody can touch their money, it's their own property. The only important thing is that money has to be invested in the most safe way. And 28 years ago, we uh, decided to put into the law that the money cannot be invested in, in, in a speculative instrument that give you a high rate of, re extremely high rate of return. For example, no Chilean money has been in this, uh, New York banks or invested in what are called derivatives or subprime mortgages? Of course not. We define low risk investment and, and you have to have your portfolio extremely diversified. You, you cannot have more than, I don't remember the number today, but 1% of your whole portfolio in one investment. So at the very least you have 100 and probably you have much, much less than 1%, so you may, each worker may have 400 investments, 400 different bonds and mortgages and stocks in certain very low risk proportions. So even if one company were to go down, because of course uh, some event would happen, you still have all the other investments. And that is it, again, common sense principle, I call it, no, don't put the, all your eggs in one basket. You see, that's why I cannot understand this Wall Street crisis where, where, where some supposedly very intelligent people put all the eggs in one basket. They all invested, there is this man of America International Group, Mr. Hank Greenberg, I met him, who had all his stocks in AAG. And he was valued, I don't know, $3 billion, and today he's valued only $3 million. Now, $3 million is okay, but he was $3 billion. But he, put, he had all his money in one stock, his own company. Well, that is very risky. You don't need to be an economist for that. She, any, any common sense mother will tell you that. Any common sense mother will tell their children, don't put the eggs in the same basket. So that concept of of, the, of life and, and of financial life is embedded in the pension reform in Chile. So even though, of course, these crises mean a lower or a higher return because there are always uh, oscillations and cycles in the market. You see, the, the Austrian economists a long time ago uh, described the business cycles. So of course, there are cycles. But there is not a possibility that you will lose all your money, not at all, it's impossible. The pension funds cannot go bankrupt because they are, as I said, incredibly diversified. Unless there is a, a nuclear war, you see, but in that case you don't need a pension, you see, so, because it... <laughs> So, that, this is the essence. Now, I could explain you a lot of things. The good thing is that the issue for market economics has produced a, a, a little of my pamphlet. I have a book explaining on this, so if there is a professor here of economics or, or a